What would you do with three and a half days to spend on one of the most beautiful islands in the Mediterranean Sea? So guys, it's another beautiful day in Corsica. Well, I know exactly what I'm doing. Get ready to join me on an unforgettable on and off-road expedition through the mesmerizing landscapes of Corsica. <laughs> I'll be riding along the exhilarating coastline and exploring amazing off-road tracks in the rugged mountains. I'm on a mission to experience the best of both worlds and I can't wait to share every twist, turn and breathtaking view with you. I set up camp in the countryside in the southern region of the island from where I'll kick off day trips for the next three days. I took a ferry from Sardinia to reach the island's southern shores where I'll be getting my initial glimpse of Corsica come afternoon on day one. I've made it to Corsica, just got off the ferry. Literally the first meters, first meters on the island. There's a nice uh, harbor down here. See, I'm gonna take advantage of the good weather today because the forecast for the next few days, uh, there's lots of rain. <laughs> Um, it looks nice. There's a few parts on the island where it's raining right now. It's hard to believe, is it? I'm in France. How cool. <laughs> I'm in France. I'm in Corsica. That's awesome. So unfortunately, I messed up with my maps. I don't have the sort of off-road maps for this part, for Corsica. I have a few off-road parts planned, so I will be careful. Just kind of scope them out. I'm not going to do anything crazy like I did in Sardinia. Get myself into some impossible situation there. <laughs> I'm really excited to explore this island. All right, I'm going along the coast north. And this is part of the tent, I think. But I picked out. So I'm on my way to the hotel. Now I did already 200 kilometers today in Sardinia. So I have another rather than another close to 100 I think I did uh, for Corsica. I've got 35 left. Ooh, ooh. I gotta watch the holes here. section of the Trans Euro Trail in Corsica was a nice entry to the country's off-road experience. Unfortunately, this didn't work out quite the way I had planned it. check this track that I'm on. It's not on the TED and it's not on what I planned. I have no map materials you can see. But I check Google and the satellite image and it just ends up nowhere. It doesn't go anywhere. And it's also going the absolute wrong direction. <laughs> so I turned the bike around. So I tried the uh, off-road tracks that I planned at home without actually having the proper map material behind it. But even if I had it, I think I would have had to turn around as I did now. Um, so I followed the TED along the way, then I had something planned myself and it just got too sketchy. I would have gone up a mountain too. So the only thing I had was Google to take a look at that and uh, it just ended up nowhere. So I retraced my steps. Now I'm taking this really tiny road that goes onto the TED track and that should bring me then to the track that leads me to the hotel. So I don't know how long it's gonna take. I'm just kind of going by Garmin's map here right now. If I'm at the hotel within an hour, it would be great. It would be seven by then, and it was a long riding day. See, so it's drizzling. I don't know where that is. It's blue sky, sunlight, and somehow there's rain coming down. 
check this out. Small little one-way street. <coughs> so, 11 kilometers to less than 10 minutes to get to the place. And that's good. For my accommodation the next three nights I really wanted to pick something that was far away from the next larger town and this is what I found. This is my destination for the next three nights. Uh, you can hear the, f the fire already. This is a restaurant. I'm looking forward to the food here. It's probably gonna be pretty awesome. My room is actually over behind the fireplace so they have a few rooms that they rent out and uh, I'll be staying here. Must be nice. That is a beautiful morning here in Corsica. Um, it's probably 8.30 in the morning. I've loaded my bike up with no luggage today because I'm staying here for three nights. So it's just uh, the camera, so the drone pack in the back. I've also got the tools in there today and the tank bag. So I'm traveling with about well, maybe 20 kilos less than I have in the past few days. So this is going to be nice. And um, today I will have a few off-road tracks uh, mixed in. I'm going to start with the TET and then there's a few other sort of, sort of easy medium off-road tracks at least. And then a lot of it will be on road, of course, about 270 kilometers. So let's get going. And by the way, these gloves that I've got here, these were my very first ones, super cheap leather gloves that I got for my Harley Davidson back in the days and I hadn't used them for a while and because I couldn't find any sort of light midweight adventure enduro gloves that I like, that are comfortable enough where I can move my fingers. And these are getting uh, some use again. Um, yeah, they've been pretty good. That bike feels so much lighter. <laughs> it's so nice. Temperature should go up to 20 degrees, so I didn't bring a mid layer. Trying to travel light today. And all of my ride today, well, the big majority at least, it will be in the country. So I'm not going to the coastline yet. That's for tomorrow. The day 270 kilometers, so that's going to be with the awful portion more than enough. I'm entering my first unpaved section of the day. Wasn't expecting it so early. I planned this a while back, so I wasn't quite sure where the off road part are, and you can't really see it on the navigation track once it's on the Garmin unit. And let's check it out. Now this area has been quite dry for this season except for the past few days where they've seen some rain lots of it too but not nearly enough for the season so this doesn't look as <laughs> half as sketchy as the stuff yesterday from uh, the tent at least not yet This picturesque forest trail isn't officially a segment of the Trans Euro Trail, yet it provided a delightful peek into the Corsican scenery on my first full day here on the island. road again really quickly okay that's good so guys I had my first 
nice off-road section through the forest. Anyway, it was quite nice. And that brought me uh, to this road alongside a reservoir, uh, which is really nice too. Barrage de l'Hospital, also known as Hospital Reservoir, is a man-made lake situated in the Hospital forest of southern Corsica. Created by a dam, it contrasts natural surroundings with its deep blue waters. So I had to pull out for this really nice lookout point here behind me. Still high up in the mountains and you can see the coastline behind me. Uh, it's a pretty nice view. It's really bright. Now the sun is kind of high up now. There's only so much you can see, but it's still, it looks much better in real life than it does on camera, I'm sure. And I'm cruising through this pretty village, which is basically located alongside a serpentine curvy road. So I'm sure all the houses get an amazing view of the valley. This definitely feels like I'm in the Mediterranean now. And it's the beginning of May. I can't imagine how warm it must be <laughs> in June, July, August. So uh, this is plenty for me here. This is a short section of the Tet again. Coming through the gate, um, there was a gate actually that seems like they have the opportunity to close this track off for whatever reason. It was open today, obviously. Always I wouldn't have been in here. I'm looking forward to a slightly lower temperatures at higher elevation. It was like 24 degrees. The bottom. <laughs> it's really hot. So this uh, seems very rideable with a large adventure bike, as you can see. Some ruts in here and but also it's not as steep and wide enough so you can choose a good line. Okay, I think this is probably the top. Nice. Nice. This section of the Trans Euro Trail took me to much higher elevations than before, and I could enjoy the amazing view over the mountainous landscapes of Corsica. So I just came off an off-road track and now it took me right to this curvy section here of uh, Tarmac. What a beautiful road. See that uh, there's more cloud cover now as there was a forecast of rain in this area for the afternoon. It's uh, noon right now. So let's see how long this stays dry. So if I remember correctly, after this on-road section, should be another off-road section waiting for me again through the mountains that's a cute little uh, town here and it's quite busy too old motorcycles here very very cool be a good time to stop but i'm not quite ready yet <laughs> okay we're back on an off-road track this is part of the tet again apparently um forest track. Well, it's probably quite the mud fest here <laughs> when it's wet. You can see all the runoff. Definitely a nice road. So it looks like the uh, really difficult sections they poured some concrete. It'll probably get pretty nasty in bad weather conditions. Oh, it gets a bit more challenging up here. Oh. 
is so much nicer without the luggage. <laughs> Bike looks much better. The only thing that's still in the way is my tank bag for these uh, inclines. You definitely tell I can pull on the handlebars. Can't lean over my tank enough. It's not the end of the world, but definitely notice. This endless uh, forest tracks. That's <laughs> so cool. Okay. Water crossing. Whoa. <laughs> It's like it's rained already, because it's all wet. And it's just from the previous days. It's water. Bam! Good thing that I have a bash plate. <laughs> Wow. Very, very cool. So I'm smack in the middle of a TED track through the forest. That was probably medium difficulty level, at least for a large adventure bike. So perfect, I don't need any more difficult than that. And uh, it's mostly in the forest, you don't really see much, but now at this elevated point, I got this amazing view. And uh, so far it looks good still. There's still clouds coming in, but it doesn't really look like rain here. Maybe I'm lucky and stays dry, we'll see. So a quick break and then I'll make my way down again, following the TED. It's crazy dark here. <laughs> the forest. So it's almost a little too dark for my goggles. Right, back on pavement. You know, this cool forest road. This tiny road just coming off the Tet off road track. Got me onto this small road. Now we're going down the hill. And I'm not sure if this is it with the off road section or if there's one more. Maybe one more. Okay, you've got to check this out. <laughs> There's just some pigs roaming around this town. So, the bike got gas. I'm getting food. <laughs> A little bit of uh, baguette here. Um, I hope. Um, it's like 1.30 or something, so it's really time to take a break. We're at the beach. Actually, people hanging out here. It's uh, 20 degrees. Feels warmer than what I'm wearing right now. And to look good for the beach ride, I just cleaned the bike. <laughs> I just came by a place that had high pressure cleaning and I just got some of the dirt off that I had on the bike, on the seat especially, especially with the luggage removed. It's, it's no easy to clean it like that. <laughs> Not sure what the deal is here. So, get to see a beach. Nestled on the captivating western coast of Corsica, Petrocella Plage boasts a coastal haven where golden sands meet azure waters. This idyllic region captivates with this charming blend of relaxing beach vibes and rugged natural beauty. After I had my first glimpse at the western coast of Corsica, I was back into the twisty roads in the mountains.
As day one was slowly coming to a close, I was enjoying this curvy road before I was making my way back to my accommodation. Oh, before I make it back to the hotel, that's a short speed of uh, off-road track. I'll see how short it actually is, but um, I was a bit surprised to see that. Well, that's a little surprise section for today. <laughs> On the last 15, wow, ocean view. Oh, I've got to pay attention to the road from up here. On the last 15 kilometers, there was a small section of dirt road all of a sudden. I thought it was done with the off-road uh, parts of it, and that was kind of fun. Going through the middle of nowhere, I suppose. And now I'm back on paved roads. Eight and a half kilometers out, and I can already taste the beer. <laughs> Whoa, what an awesome day of riding. I'm 150 meters from my hotel or restaurant slash hotel. I had such a great day, not a drop of rain, really cool. It looks like place is filling up already with customers. See them all turning in. I want to have a beer or two. There's another motorcycle right here from France. Very cool. So the bike looks a whole lot nicer than it did yesterday morning because I washed it. Uh, not so much because I care what the bike looks like, but um, just the seat and the part where the luggage was mounted is hard to get to when the luggage is mounted and I'm still carrying in really dirty luggage. So uh, this stuff is clean now, still my saddlebags need to be cleaned. It's another beautiful day in Corsica. This is uh, day number two, the full day. I've mean, been here a day and a half. Um, so this is the second full day. This time I'm going to go up the west coast, um, all the way up north. Then I'm going to go to the sort of middle of the island and then make my way through the mountains back down south again. So it's a big loop, about 325 kilometers. There's a small off-road section in it. It's 8.45 in the morning, so let's get started. So it's already showing 20 degrees. Today's forecast is Blue sky, sunny, no rain. And I expect it to get quite warm throughout the day. So I just passed the spot where someone was mowing the grass and just absolutely loved the smell of fresh mowed grass. It's another cute little village in the mountains. So today is Wednesday, I believe. <laughs> I think it's Wednesday. And uh, so it's the middle of the week here. It looks like this town has come to life. Oh, it's such a beautiful road again. Because of all those vegetation, you see those trees. Then it's vegetation cover. That's really nice. So in that sense, it definitely looks different to some of the roads in Sardinia, even though those islands are so close together. I mean, they are in different countries, really, but that's kind of arbitrary, really. Uh, could easily be in the same country, but you can tell the difference in the country, obviously, with the culture and people, language, obviously. But also, uh, this looks a little different. These uh, mountain roads, vegetation looks a little different.
Not really sure what the hold up is here. But I guess I'm not even faster for this cool guy. <laughs> I got kidding, man. I'm not that crazy. Nee, nee, das ist der neue Turm. Das ist der neue schon, aber man sieht es auch noch so ein bisschen. Ja, ja, das sind schon die anderen Schürze, die danach kamen. Ja, da ja. dachte ich mir auch so, ja, die Kurve bin ich letztes Jahr auch gefahren. Sind wir da noch stehen geblieben? <lacht> Mit Andacht oder was? Ja. <lacht> cool. Wie heißt der? Manuel. Manuel. Nikolas. Nikolas, hi. Jetzt gibt es ja doch noch einen Tank, ich wollte gerade schon weiterfahren. Das hat gerade zu lange gedauert hier mit dem. Ja, das ist irgendwie ein Fahrer. I met these nice guys from Augsburg at a gas station. Uh, we were filling up the bikes and they were recognizing the bike in me. And they have the tour plan that I have for tomorrow, but it's supposedly a really scenic part. I haven't seen much of the scenic stuff yet. And that's actually uh, going where they're going. So I'm gonna ride with them for a little bit and uh, skip that part then tomorrow because I have a bit more time today also for drone flying tomorrow I'm a bit pushed for time to make it to the ferry so little change of plans and um, there are two highlights on the way one is along the coastal road and the other thing is along a, um, a gorge so I haven't really fully done my homework for all the cool parts these guys have so let's see so guys I don't know what the hell happened, this thing came off. So that black electrical tape of mine is really the most universal tool I have with me. That I had in the tank bag, fixed glasses with it, all kinds of stuff, and now the, uh, the sun peaked. Now the screw that's on, on top of the helmet, it must have just vibrated off. I was really wondering why that was lasting so long because it's just made out of plastic. This, uh, you know, a metal screw probably would have been better. And just the top came off and then the front part fell down. And all the side pieces, these are neat to attach my visor. So if I lose these, I'm really screwed. But I've lost them already. Uh, while I was riding in Italy and I had to, to tape them to the side. So I guess the helmet's getting a bit old and uh, it's just starting to fall apart. At least the uh, mechanism is, so I think the spell is still okay. Okay. Time to pull over and get a view of the beautiful coastline. The amazing beaches and blue water is the reason many tourists come to this island. However, main tourist season does not start until the end of June, so the middle of May is a perfect time for motorcycle riders to explore Corsica. So apparently some of the rock formations that are coming up very soon are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site and uh, that's part of the sort of curvy road that we're going to go through here in a minute. Quite excited about that. Yeah, sollen sie auch. Genau, dafür sind sie da, solange ihr nicht leidet. Jungs, macht's gut. Bleiben wir ein Fest. Bis dann. Okay, so I'm going to go the rest solo. And I might see the guys again. Because uh, if that's such a scenic spot, there's a good chance I'll be spending some time there. Calonca di Piana, a UNESCO World Heritage Site on Corsica's western coast, stands as a testament to nature's artistry. Mm -hmm. 
These dramatic red granite cliffs and secluded inlets, sculptured by centuries of wind and waves, form a mesmerizing landscape that defies imagination. Emerging from the azure waters of the Mediterranean, the Kalangs offer a rare spectacle of nature's raw beauty. This region is a paradise for motorcycle riders due to its diverse and breathtaking landscapes. Corsica's well-maintained routes and hidden gems like the Calang de Piana make it an irresistible destination for those seeking both thrilling rides and stunning natural vistas. Endless roads alongside the mountain. How cool is that? Awesome, awesome, awesome. The winding coastal roads provide exhilarating stretches along the Azure waters. While the challenging mountain tracks offer an adrenaline pumping experience. With its mix of coastal beauty, dramatic cliffs and rugged interior, riders can enjoy ever-changing scenery in a relatively compact area. I should be over here and I went alongside the coast for a bit too long. It's really hard to read this just without the actual guidance and I'm way off track. So let me see what I can do now at this point because uh, I need to get back. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Well, it's a beautiful road, so it's not really a waste of time or anything. I just need to come up with... Oh, you can't even see anything here. Mm. No, it's, I mean, it's complete shit. And there's no shade anywhere. Um, God damn it. <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, it's already a detour, another detour on a detour. So... I can't see anything on this thing. It's so dark. Damn. This is completely useless. And there's no quick way to get over there, is there? Oh, I ask Google what the deal is. I really messed up on the navigation today. I'm so far out along the west coast, north end of the west coast. Uh, there's no point of going back. So what I'm doing is I'm going all the way around, all the way to the north tip, and then I have to make my way back to my place where I'm staying tonight. That's another five hours, so you can see that on the map. I should have gone over on this side, and um, now I'll be going this way. 250 kilometers in addition to, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so anyway, I... Uh, I'm going to take Google's recommendation. It'll lead me back to the track. I was going to go from north to south, but I am now taking the entire detour around the northern tip of the island. So this is going to be a long, long riding day. So the initial plan was to do all of this here tomorrow and then make it to the ferry. This would have been a long day too. Now, since I will be riding all of this today, I can look for a different route tomorrow. Let's see what I do there. I mean, it's a beautiful mountain road. But considering I've been riding for six hours already, 
without a break and I've got another five to go. <laughs> that is a long, long day. So I'll be lucky if I get home by uh, eight o'clock. Yeah, 12 hour day of riding. I haven't stopped for a break yet, other than taking video. Okay, check out the beautiful coast. This is uh, the north section of the, not the most northern tip, but it's north part of the island. So I took a little detour through a curvier section because there are a lot of straights in there. They're fast, but they're kind of boring. So I just uh, keep it a bit more interesting. This adds another half an hour to the overall ride. It gets me one on, to one of those mountain roads again. But I see that a lot into the mountain. This is not the first place I'm seeing the cemetery there. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Seems to be a lot of those. The dead have a better view than most other people in their living. <laughs> so it's quite, quite interesting. So in case you're wondering, this is part, uh, because of the red line there, this is part of the French TET track. Obviously it's the on-road section of the TET. I don't know what it is, maybe the reason is that I'm not living close to mountains, but every time I see them I get really excited, especially if you got a view like this, it's absolutely amazing. You have this sort of dark shadow of mountains coming up in the background, it looks really cool because the sun is now behind it, and uh, it's such an awesome view, it's really hard to capture on camera, but uh, you know, when the chin's clear you get a nice peek at it. And I'm heading towards those mountains. So cool. This part of uh, Curvy Mountain Road, that was part of Plan B. Wow, look at this. Wow. <laughs> yes. Plan B for day number two. If I hadn't done the off-road section. Now, Plan B would have been a longer on-road section and would have included this particular track. It just looks great on the map. Um, probably not go there. It looks like there's a lot of activities around here too. Once tourist season hits full swing, not quite yet, but... Ah, that's very cool. So, thanks to the detour today, I get to ride this part. Otherwise, I would have skipped this entirely. Now I'll get to ride it. Cool. Yeah, this must be it. Yeah, this is very, very nice up here. town here. I'm very close to uh, my accommodation tonight. 
and it's late. It is 7.30. A few more minutes, I'm there. And it was a long day. <laughs> So today's ride is going to be mostly on pavement. There are two sections in there that are off-road sections. One is going to be in the mountains uh, in the center of the island. And the last one is right before you get to Bastia. There's a small section that takes you over a mountain that both should be relatively easy to medium. We'll see. Um, and that's going to be the last bit of off-road riding on this trip. And from there on out, it's all pavement. I'm on a fully loaded bike again for a change. It was actually quite nice being on the bike without the luggage. I'm literally just minutes away from the place I was staying at. I'm already hitting curvy roads like this. It's quite amazing. There's so many roads that lead to the place that every day I'm not going on the same road. It's always different directions from the place I was staying at. That's really cool. So this is the first time I'm on this particular road. Going straight up north. Really cool road. It's a little dirty. I have to watch out for sand spots. I had a few of those yesterday and uh, if they're in the shade, it can be a pretty tricky surprise if you're cornering too hard. So I'm riding on the D69, basically through the center of the island, starting from the south of the island of Corsica. I'm in an elevation of about 900 meters now. Nice feature, by the way, from Scenic, just showing you the elevation. And it feels a bit cooler and it looks, it looks really nice. I haven't seen any traffic coming up here. And it's kind of cool having these sort of old trees line the road. It's a very specific look that you get here on this island um, and other places too. It looks really, really cool. So this road cuts through the center of the island and it goes up and down as it's going through the mountains which are in the center of the island. So I'll be going up and down the mountains here for the first bit of it. Finally, I get to see the pigs that everyone's been telling me about. Everyone's been telling me about these little piggies on the island and there's only one time I saw them. Are they actually coming over to check me out? That is so cute, look at them. Little piglets. They're very really curious, I guess. No, I'm not curious enough. The month of May presents itself as the ideal time window to explore Corsica, arriving before the tourist rush and boasting comfortably moderate temperatures. So it's no wonder that I keep running into groups of motorcycle riders on many of the on-road sections. just about over an hour into the ride and it's so beautiful how the sun shines through these leaves and I should be getting close to my first off-road section I think it's about 14 kilometers long 
than I would expect going through woods and the mountains. Similar to what I've seen the days before, but we'll see. Also, I'm not quite sure if it goes up or down. <laughs> um, so, we'll see. So this track is just sort of off to the side of the on-road track and it's going through the middle of the island, the mountains. And we'll see if all of it is going up or if some of it comes back down again, I have no idea. And today I'm doing it with a much heavier bike than the days before because I've got all my luggage in the bike. So it looks like there's been other bikes up here. Kind of cool to meet someone up here on the motorcycle, but in general, there's been so little traffic even on tarmac. Chances are probably slim to none to run into other adventure riders. These tracks. So that's uh, kind of what I was expecting, a nice uh, forest track. It's just a pleasure to ride. And so far it's been relatively easy as a track. There's a few ruts in here to pay attention to, but... What? <laughs> The muddy sand section, that got me by surprise here for a second. We duck in the front wheel. Maybe an easy track, but there are parts that <laughs> make you drop the bike for sure, even on the easier tracks. So this is it. Be it actually, guys. Twisty mountain section on the T30. I did parts of T30 yesterday, the northern parts of it. Uh, this is a larger street. You can see it's faster, larger radius turns. That's gonna get me to the next small mountain section. Yeah, just a little bit. This looks good. Place to eat. That's really the need of um, a break. This time it's a light lunch. Um, yesterday's pizza was a little much for the rest of the night. Light lunch, coke, and then I'm gonna go and um, head up north. It was time to take a break. And I could sit outside in the shade and not for the rest of the trip. Oh, this is a great scenic drive. Look at this. Whoa. Whoa. Jesus, people. Stay in your lane. Whoa. Nice car, though. The 
coastal road near Marine de Negro delivers an exceptional riding experience on a motorcycle. With the sea on one side and charming settlements on the other, this route offers a captivating journey through variant terrains. It's a ride that encapsulates Corsica's essence, providing motorcyclists with a truly immersive and exhilarating adventure. The town of Nonza and Corsica stands out for its unique character and stunning setting. Perched dramatically on rocky hillside overlooking the sea, Nonza offers breathtaking panoramic views of the Mediterranean. The square Nonza Tower that looms above the town adds historical intrigue, making Nonza a picturesque blend of natural wonder and cultural heritage. The Black Beach gets its name from the dark pebbles that form it, creating a striking contrast against the deep blue sea it touches. So this is it. This is the track. The last off-road track of this trip. So this is part of the TED track and it wasn't on the Garmin maps. Clubs. Oh, this is cool. Check this out. I was down there at the coastline and now up here in the mountains one final time. The scenery is awesome too. Look at this. The last off-road track became my top pick among Corsica's hidden routes due to its stunning vistas. It stood out for offering an alluring panorama that took my breath away. Moreover, its slightly increased level of challenge added an extra level of excitement. This combination of scenic beauty and modern difficulty made it a right to remember. So, I hit the peak and now there's a good portion of gravel going down from the peak. That's what it looks like and it's got an amazing view which I can't really enjoy while I'm riding this. <laughs> Let's see how long that section is. Because I really wanted to do this and of course I was a bit pushed for time, I have to admit. So let's see how much of that is going to stay uh, off-road and it's going to at some point turn into pavement again. And then it's still very small roads to get me to down to the coast. And then I have to go down to Bastia. I'm sort of in the middle of the northern tip of the island. So I'm kind of cutting through the middle of it in a way. I hope I'll be glad I did this and not regret that I missed the ferry. <laughs> um, but this is a really nice pass, I have to say. It's a really good, nice view from up here, both sides actually. This puts a smack in the middle. You don't see the east and the west side. Trees are crazy. What the dead, or if it just uh, they look like this in the winter? Oh, I must have done in one piece here, except for the short. 
stop for the drone flight. I can feel it now too. I'm a bit uh, knees hurt. <laughs> but I think I made it through this section and I'm glad I did. See the paved section down there. Concrete, I hope this is it. So, which way? Which way? Oh... This way. Correct. Yeah. Ooh! So, that was a long off-road section, up and down. That was a little uh, a little challenging. That was probably medium difficulty, but... Um, because of the rocks and... But it was beautiful. It's absolutely worth it. Of course, putting it very last right before I have to catch my ferry is a bit risky. Because I had no idea how long this would take to get through the section of how long it is. Google's telling me I will get to the town in about 34 minutes, so it gets me there at six, two hours before the ferry release. That sounds about right. Uh, I don't know if I need to check in or anything. I'll, I'll see. Uh, be nice to get something to eat first because the food on the ferry is just horrendous and overpriced. I'm really glad I did it. I got to see this part too. It's definitely nice. Always fun to check in with these. Oh, this is my ferry. Wow, this is <laughs> that's a big one. So I wasn't quite sure where to go. Um, but you just drive in, that's it. I remember you had to check in into an office um, at some of the other ferries that I used. And I guess she sent me to the motorcycle line. That's I'm not the only person on a motorcycle. So I wonder how soon we can get on there. Hello. It's <laughs> a lot of motorcycles here today. But this is uh, main season for motorcycle riders. It's not main season for tourists in general, but... Look at this huge ferry. It's just an incredible amount of vehicles that came out of here. Mm. Let's see where they're gonna put us. In the upper decks, lower decks, who knows? 